Welcome back. It's been a while, uh, but I'm going to get straight into it with another screencast um, of one of my editing sessions, looking at the Cinemagraph and how I then do this extra edit uh, with a tilt down um, on the vertical video. Uh, it's this beautiful waterfall down in the Waikato region of New Zealand called Bridal Vales. Uh, waterfall stunning location so first of all a uh, quick look at the video which is a 4k 60p uh, done in vlog so you can see it's a very gray flat image uh, because of vlog this is all shot on my gh5s uh, which i did buy uh, i haven't done an update since uh, so i brought it into after effects which is where I do all my color grading. And I'm doing a selection about 10 seconds um, on that video that I can then loop. And then creating a new composition, uh, a new project, and straight away adding an adjustment layer so that I can start adding lumetri color for my color correction. And initially what I'm doing is applying uh, a LUT, um, V-Log LUT, and I'm playing around with a few different options. I've got a selection of ones that I've purchased or downloaded few built-in ones, the standard Panasonic one, they all work um, differently depending on whether it's daylight, uh, shade, internal daylight. Um, in this case the Leeming LUT um, worked quite nicely, just needed a little bit of extra exposure so I pushed that up and uh, and then I'm really sort of doing some further adjustments. So you'll see here I'm adding a lot of multiple adjustment layers to build up different um, color looks and adjustments. Um, to different areas of the image using masking. So on this one I've added a photo filter, um, blue, because I want to give a slightly cooler um, top of the image. At this stage I've left it um, in landscape, but I flip it around later. Um, so feathering it so it's nice and soft gradation, almost like having a, a, a filter on your lens, um, nice and cool at the top. Having a warm foreground and a cool background often gives that nice separation when you're doing color grading. Um, one of the basic rules of, uh, of color in images. Then adding again another adjustment layer. And what I'm looking to do here is actually start bringing some contrast. So selectively um, using masking around the darker shadow areas of the image. So you can see around the cliff there where it starts to um, have some deeper shadows in the recesses. I'm selecting that so that I can pull those back down. It adds a bit of atmosphere um, around the cliff and around the waterfall. So with a still image, well, a, a static um, frame like this, you can do simple masking. Uh, if you had a moving image, obviously, um, with video, you would have to use um, tracking on the mask. Um, but when you're doing a cinemagraph like this, a static um, frame locked off on a tripod, um, you can just use very simple static masks to do your color correction on different areas of the image. It's a nice way of doing it. And it's really quite quick. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with color grading and, uh, and Photoshop and just remember After Effects is essentially like the Photoshop for video. So you see I'm playing around pulling down the shadows um, with the curves and again adding a good large mask um, so that it's a nice soft gradation. Pulling down a little bit more, turning on and off to see how that looks. Mostly there what I did was I copy and pasted that same uh, mask, deleted it and then re-added a mask to that um, curve on just this little area to the side just because I wanted to pull that down a little bit more essentially just doubling it up um, on that area and again feathering it just so that that area there matches a bit better to the darker recesses on the other side of the image so turning it on and off yeah pretty happy with the way that adds some um, depth to the image and another adjustment layer where I wanted to change the color of this water. It's just a bit too muddy brown, so I wanted to add some cold, some teal, um, bluey greens to the water. Um, so again, a new adjustment layer, selecting um, with a mask. And I wanted to darken it down a little bit as well. So you see here this feather. I really didn't pull that feather up enough. It's, it's just too sharp, it's not soft enough. And I later realized this, and you'll see in a little while I come back and I have to actually redo this. 
um, so I'm adding a photo filter to cool that down with blue um, cyan uh, just really start cooling it down and uh, it's really sort of just adding some more depth and atmosphere to the image um, again color correction limitary layers um, to um, pull down um, the curves um, increase the coolness of the temperature now I mentioned this mistake I'm making here with the feather um, that's what these videos are all about it's really an honest workflow of what I do I'm not a complete expert at color grading um, I've got a number of years experience uh, but hey I'm learning all the time as well so this is about just learning from my happy accidents my strokes of genius or my mistakes uh, as I go and hopefully it helps so here we go I've got this mask um, pulling out different areas just to get it around that white but what it's actually going to be doing is bleeding the blue into that white a bit too much which is what I come back later to fix so new adjustment layer and I want this white water to pop out just a little bit more uh, so selecting around it I want to cool it down a little bit as well so that, that water um, it really stands out from the warmth surrounding it Again, feather that mask and through Lumetri pulling down, um, pulling up the highlights, holding the, the mid area of the curve so that that doesn't change, but just pulling up the highlights at the top there to really make it pop. And then pulling down the temperature just to make it a little bit cooler. And then finally, just a new adjustment layer to add a creative look, um, to tie it all together. I often do that at the stage, just playing around with a few different creative looks, uh, which I'll usually pull back quite a lot from 100%, so that it's not too much. It just helps to tie all these different elements together. Um, and I'll be honest, I do like a more filmic look to my images. Uh, and um, some of these do that really nicely. They're a collection of different creative looks that I've downloaded or purchased. And uh, that one worked quite nicely. So that natural film fade uh, gave it a little bit of a, a misty feel to it. Uh, that slight whitening. Um, I added a bit more contrast back to it again. Uh, turning on and off. Really happy with that final look. and I wanted to just pull down the blue in that top area um, a little bit more. And then exporting to ProRes, always putting it out to ProRes so that it's lossless, uh, because I'm gonna do some further edits on this. Next, going into Cinemagraph Pro. Flexil Cinemagraph Pro, and there we go. So, quick preview of that output image video still in landscape mode but you'll see in cinemagraph pro i can then just flip that around i like doing that in cinemagraph pro because i can um, do all that very quickly cinemagraph pro project first thing flip around in the crop you have all sorts of crop um, which are non-destructive you can come back and change those later and then using the mask brush nice soft um, edge to it um, i paint out that waterfall so that is the moving area um, of the cinemagraph uh, and then bring, bringing down the hardness so it's even softer um, and bring down the opacity so that around the water of the actual uh, bottom of the waterfall there it's, it's just very soft very slight movement almost fading back in so technically I don't know if I'd call this a cinemagraph um, it doesn't have another element like a bird flying through which is still or a person standing in the frame which makes it feel like it's a combination of still and moving. In a way it's just a, a seamless motion loop. Uh, but hey, not a lot of people are too fussy about the terminology. It's a seamless loop, it works really well. I did another version of this. Um, at 200 frames per second on the GH5S but that's not 4K and it's quite lossy in terms of its quality. Okay so this is where I realized that that blue is bleeding too much into the whites of the waterfall. 
but I figured, well, I exported it and then realized, well, I'm going to redo this again, which you'll see shortly. The 200 frames per second video um, looked really beautiful, but it's amazing. A lot of people said to me it almost looks like a plotograph. Plotograph is other software which manipulates a still image. It sort of morphs um, and melts elements of the image into looking like motion. It works really well in waterfalls, um, but this 60 frames per second video um, looks almost a bit more natural. So I'm back in After Effects to redo this mask. You see it's too blue so I changed the feather, increased it like I should have done in the first place, um, so it's a much softer mask. It just blends it more gradually and I'm pulling the mask further back away so that it's not bleeding in onto the white quite as much. A little bit I don't mind. The spray that's coming up being a little bit blue is okay. And that looks a lot more natural. So quickly uh, put that back out again. Again ProRes, just re-putting out that file. And what you can do in Cinemagraph Pro, copy this new output, open up the Cinemagraph Pro project, show package contents. Now the original movie file, you can delete that and paste in this new output. You then have to rename it to the same name, movie.mov. And when you come back out and double click to open the actual project itself, it'll now have the new video put into it. And this is a really great feature of Cinemagraph Pro to be able to change a video and just bring it straight back into the project with all the original edits, um, the masking, the loop settings, the crossfade, everything will remain the same without having to redo this. So I'm outputting this um, as a ProRes again, three loop, three or four loops to about 30 seconds. Now I'm doing ProRes because I'm going to edit this even further. So back in After Effects, it's a vertical video now. I've created this on the timeline. And what I'm going to do is change the composition to landscape into HD. So that's a 4K vertical. I'm changing the settings into an HD 1920 by 1080 so of course it crops in on this vertical image which means that I can start moving around the image as if I'm tilting a tripod up and down so on the timeline you're going to go into all the different uh, position points and by clicking on that you are creating a keyframe on the scale and the position at the very beginning of the timeline, I'm saying I want it to be all the way up the top here. And it's adding that keyframe to the timeline. I want it to then, near the center of the timeline, to be down the very bottom of the waterfall. So by dragging it down, it's automatically creating those new keyframes there, all the way down the bottom. So that as it plays through the timeline, it's going to move from the first keyframe at the top down to the very bottom. Then I'm copying those and pasting them a little bit later just so that it's a, a pause at the bottom of the waterfall. Then I'm copying those first ones from the top all the way towards the end there. So the movement will be from there at the top, tilting down to the bottom of the waterfall, pausing down the bottom there and then moving all the way back up again. And because this is now a seamless loop, it will actually just repeat seamlessly with this up and down motion. The keyframes, I'm then using Easy Ease on all of them, which basically means it will just ease into those keyframes. It won't just suddenly stop. It'll just slowly, gradually move into it like this, like you're just slowly moving a tripod with a good fluid head on it. And then out and put that again to ProRes because I want to then bring that into Premiere which I'm going to use to create the final output to MP4 for web. And I just want to loop it about three times so it's about a minute and a half. One, two, three and you see at the join there you can't see where it starts and finishes. 
it's just seamlessly looping. And there you have it, the final output, both as a traditional cinemagraph and a tilting looping video. So I've just recently set up a Patreon account, patreon.com forward slash Mr. John Kane. I would love it if some of you who are already using that service or want to try it out would join me there. I'm not about to start charging for this sort of content. Anything you see on my YouTube is not going to be paywalled. Uh, it'll just be a centralized place to channel it all through, along with some of my written content, my blog posts, uh, and high res versions of my cinemagraphs that I post regularly to Instagram. Uh, I will have the option to donate a dollar a month for anyone that feels so obliged because that's what Patreon is all about. It's about patrons supporting creatives, uh, but that's by no means a requirement to get my content. But I will also be selling subscription-based uh, packages for stock Cinemagraph videos on a monthly basis, as well as some of my Cinemagraph soundscape videos, which I've always charged for, uh, which are really immersive uh, videos. Uh, so. There you have it, hit subscribe and I'll see you again soon.